Hey guys, in this one, you're gonna learn the best camera settings for the iPhone 12 in both video and photo. I'm gonna go through my camera settings and why I use those camera settings so you can afterwards just choose what you think is best for you and get the absolute best results from your iPhone 12. I'm gonna first get into all the video settings and I will leave a ton more information in the links below, uh, other tutorials and everything like that. Check those out, but we're gonna start with the resolution for video that I use. So we're gonna come into the camera settings in the iPhone 12 and then choose our resolution. And really it's a choice between 1080p or 4K. Actually, the iPhone itself will tell you and give you a kind of a guide as to what the benefits are of each. So as you can see, there's a space saver option. That's a lower resolution. You have a default and you also have smoother here as well, which as you can see is the 60 frames per second. So we have to differentiate between resolution, which is how sharp your image is going to be, and also the frames per second, which is how many photos are captured per second to create the video. So when Apple says that 60 frames a second is smoother, it's technically true, but it can also be misleading. Smoother is, I guess, assumed to be better, but that's not actually the case. As I said, I use 4K and I also use 24 frames a second. So this is default for me. And this is actually what Apple call cinematic on the iPhone 12 or cinematic video. So with 4K resolution, you just get a lot of benefits. You get a higher resolution, so images are going to appear sharper. But also when you shoot in 4K, you actually shoot at a higher bit rate. So that means the amount of information that is captured when you're shooting video is way higher than 1080p. It's not just higher resolution, you get larger files. And larger files means more information, more detail, better colors, in 4K, you get amazing image stabilization. There are no downgrades there. You also get all the amazing HDR for video that Apple use. That's the dynamic range and all the computational photography that they use. That's all available in 4K as well. The only thing you have to consider with choosing 4K is how much storage you have on your phone. The file sizes are bigger. And so if you don't want that, then maybe switch down to 1080p. But 4K really is the standard and Apple do a good job of trying to make those files as small as possible whilst preserving as much detail as possible. HDR video, this is something for the Pro and Pro Max. So this is what you may have heard Apple call Dolby Vision. So this is actually a feature just for the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. It's not on any of the other phones before the 12 series or even on the mini or the normal 12. If you do want to edit your videos after, then you're gonna need programs that support all of this and the Dolby Vision. iMovie does, Final Cut Pro I think will or will do very soon. And also Dolby Vision can only be seen on uh, displays that support it. So all of the iPhone 12 displays do support it. So if you're shooting video on the iPhone and viewing video on the iPhone, yeah, go ahead and turn it on. It's gonna give you a much better experience. Something else you get with Dolby Vision is 10-bit video recording, which is in relation to the amount of colors that are captured. 10-bit records over a billion different colors, whereas that's compared to 8-bit, which shoots about 17 million. So 10-bit has a lot more information. It's gonna look better as long as you have all of the hardware to actually watch Dolby Vision. Coming back to frame rates now, do you choose 24 frames a second or 60 frames a second? Well, 24 frames a second is what's used in the movies. It's a classic film look. It gives slightly more blurry movement and I use 24 for all my video. 60 frames a second has more than double the amount of photos per second of video. This isn't better, it just creates a smoother motion. So motion appears smoother and more lifelike and more realistic. That isn't always a good thing, it's just a different look. I personally prefer 24, some people prefer 60. There's no right or wrong here, it's just slightly different styles. As long as you know the difference, you can choose what's best for you. Coming down to formats, I always choose most compatible. I've had issues here and there with the high efficiency image compression, so I just go to most compatible because I'm sending videos off to other places to edit them. Slow motion, I choose 1080p at 120 frames a second, and that's because I don't really have many use cases for 240 frames a second. It's almost too slow. You just get too many images per second of video. It's very, very slow. You don't really get any movement at all, and I don't really have many uses for that. Also with 240 frames a second, you also go down in resolution, and so the quality of the video isn't really gonna be there. Now coming to photo, and yeah, there's some really cool things that you can turn on or off when it comes to taking photo with the iPhone 12. 
First thing I do is actually turn on the grid. So this allows me to line up shots, just normal shots, but also a really good feature when you do have the grid on is that you can take photos from directly above and it's gonna tell you when you're square on. You can see when you lift the phone up and actually shoot downwards, this crosshair comes on the screen and it just allows you to line up the yellow crosshair and the white crosshair. So when they're lined up, you are perfectly level to what's beneath you and you can take a perfectly level shot. It's a really great feature that you don't have if the grid isn't there. It just saves me and I just leave the grid on. Do you want to mirror the front camera? I leave this one off. You can change this in the Photos app really easily by flipping the photo anyway. So on or off, it doesn't really matter. Photo capture scene detection. Now I have this off for most of the time. This is actually going to make your photos look a bit different depending on what you're shooting. So there's loads of different modes. Maybe if you're taking pictures of some food or some flowers, it's gonna change the style of the images. It may bump up the saturation and the colors if you're shooting a flower, for example. It might make everything a little bit more saturated and punchy if you're taking photos of food to make that look a bit better. I turn this one off because personally, I just like to shoot very normal, very flat images out of the camera. And then if I want to change them later, I can really easily edit these, put them in the Photoshop app, or just use the Photos app to change some of the styles. Prioritize faster shooting. Yes, I have this on. If you need to take a bunch of images in quick succession, you're gonna want this on so that you don't miss the shot. Lens correction works really well too. So if you're going to the ultra wide camera because the lens is so wide, you may get a lot of distortion around the edges of the photo. It's not gonna look good, especially if you're shooting buildings, they're gonna look like they're built at an angle. And so having this on just tries to sort that out. I don't really see any downsides of this, so I definitely put it on. Smart HDR is also an absolute no-brainer. This is the reason why photos look so good on smartphones. The computational photography, it takes multiple images at different exposures, stitches them all together, and makes something absolutely incredible looking that even a DSLR can't really get. This is the reason why smartphones are so good, so definitely have it on. Now coming inside the camera app itself, there are some things we can change. The first, I have flash off. I don't need it on. It gives a very specific look that I don't usually need. The iPhone 12 at least has night mode on the ultra wide and the main camera. So you just don't need it and I turn it off. Live focus I also turn off, but there's actually loads of benefits to this. So the live focus, you get a few seconds of video before uh, you actually press the shutter button, which is really great. The biggest benefit of this is really going back into the Photos app and then you can just swipe along and basically choose a still frame from that three seconds of video. So this would be great if maybe the main image was a bit blurry because your subject moved or something, or well, you can flick through and find one that isn't blurry. So you may wanna turn it on. I personally just have it off. I don't really know why, I just never really use it. And then we come to aspect ratio. So you can do a 16 by nine, which is a taller or a wider aspect ratio, obviously, depending on how you're holding the phone. If you want to upload to Instagram, 16 by nine is probably gonna work for you. It takes up the whole display. It's not gonna give you a wider image. It's just going to zoom in on the image to fill up the display and give you that taller or wider aspect ratio. Square is also really good for uploading to Instagram. Actually, the four by three standard that photos are sized in isn't good for Instagram. You're gonna either have to zoom in to make it square or try and zoom out to make it longer. But you can choose what's right for you. And then coming to filters in the camera app, I make sure all of these are turned off. Like I said before, I just like to shoot a flat image. And all of these filters, you can actually go into the Photos app and put all of these on afterwards. You don't need to shoot them in camera to get them. You just go into the Photos app, choose which one you wanna put on after you've taken the image. And I wanna share a pro tip with you if you didn't know on the iPhone these days, when you open the camera app, you can just set it to open on photo. If you wanna really quickly shoot a video, you can press the shutter button and then slide the shutter button off to the right and it's actually gonna start recording video. It means that you don't have to swipe and then press video and then possibly have missed what you wanna record. It's a really quick, easy way of getting the camera app open and getting video if you need it. But they were my iPhone 12 camera settings for video and photo. Hope they were helpful for you. Let me know what you think and all your settings in the comments below as always. That's it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.